Hello there. It's me. Welcome to the Witcher Math Channel. Today we're going to work on how to write an equation from a tile pattern. Woo! Here we go. What's a tile pattern? What are you even talking about, Mr. Witcher? Well, this. These are tile patterns. Do, 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 do. These are tiles. These are patterns. Therefore, tile patterns. And by the end of this short video, you uh, hopefully will be able to look at a pattern like this and write an equation like that. Okay, well, let's get moving then, okay? All right, the same pattern I just showed you, I've changed to red highlighting now, and the red squares are constant. You can see they're the same in every figure. As we build an equation, which is our goal here, remember, our goal is to do that. So while we start building that, um, we're gonna use a plus one to show to, to account for those red squares, okay, to show where they are in the equation. So that's plus one, which means no matter what our equation says, blah, 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 all this stuff down here, it's always going to be blah, 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 all this stuff, plus one. Okay, next. Blue. The blue sections change or grow for each figure, right? The red ones stay the same, they're constant. The blue ones change. Um, we want to relate the change to the figure number because the figure number represents X, okay? Hey. So the figure number represents X. How do they relate to each other? Well, figure number one has two in a blue section. Figure number two has three. Figure number three has four, and so on. So it's figure number plus one makes this blue section, and there's two of those blue sections. So X plus one represents one of these blue things, and we multiply that whole quantity by two to represent the fact that, well, there's two of them. So, so far, to recap, we'll call it half time of making this equation. To recap, we've got the blue, which is 2x plus 2, right? 2 times x plus 2 times 1. 2x plus 2. And the plus 1, which was the red, okay? There we go, and I've got it all written in there so you can see what's going on. Okay, we've got two X's and we've got three ones. So two X plus three. <sighs> green, the green are squares. Squares are kind of tricky. Ooh, squares are kind of tricky. Uh, these are, they're growing, right? It's predictable. You could say, oh, the next one is gonna have, um, right, the next one would be a five by five square. If I go backwards, it'd be a one and so on. But how does that relate to the figure number? That's the key here, because figure number represents the letter X. Right, here we go. Well, if you add one to the figure number, then make the square out of that quantity, then we're good. For example, figure one plus one makes two, make a two square. Two plus one makes a three square. X plus one makes a four square. So if we substitute X to mean any figure number, we can add one to any figure number, make a square, and that accounts for the green section. So here's what we have so far. We're almost done. Actually, we are done. It's just not simplified yet. If we put it all together, we've got the X plus one squared, which is the green section. We've got the two X plus three, which represents the blue and the red put together. If you remember that from back here, right? We ended up with two X plus three when we put blue and red together. So that's where the two X plus three came from. We're almost done, doing great. You can take a nap after this, hang tough. This is a quick one, okay? Anyway, if one of our tasks on a problem like this, which usually whether it's a standardized test or in class, you'll be asked to draw, you know, the figure before and the figure after. So if we're going to do that, we just follow the pattern, which I still color coded. Since red stays the same every time, I'm going to start with the red. Since blue grows by one every time, two, three, four, five. And if I go backwards, five, four, three, two. 2, 1 would be for figure 0. The squares, 2 squared, 3 squared, 
4 squared, 5 squared for figure 4, and 1 squared for figure 0, right? Okay, so figure 0, figure 4, done. Do, do, do. Make a table. Sometimes you'll be asked to make a table for problems like this. Um, it's an XY table. Based on the first three figures, which I've shown here, we can start to fill in that XY table because the figure number is the X value. So we have one, two, three, we're given to us, right? The number of tiles. And these figures can look like a lot of different things on the standardized test. They, I've seen them look like popsicle sticks. I've seen them look like match sticks. Um, other weird things, I don't know. So they don't have to look like this for you to see a pattern happening. Keep that in mind, okay? So figure one, if we just count the squares in the figure, there's 9, 16, 25. Okay, and then we could go back to that and see that figure zero had four. And do you see something happening here? Do you notice what's going on? 9, 16, 25. How do those relate to each other? Hmm. Wait a minute. I'm excited now. We're going to go double yellow, double yellow. Woo! I'm excited now. Okay. So what I noticed just there in blue is that, hey, 9 is 3 squared. 16 is 4 squared. 25 is 5 squared. Okay. I see a simpler way to write that big long equation that we ended up with way back there, right? Big long equation, perfectly good, perfectly functional. Would you rather write x plus 2 squared? Because that's what's happening, right? If I take figure 1, 1 plus 2 is 3. Make a square, 9. 2 plus 2 is square is 4. Make a square is 16. 3 plus 3. 3 plus 2, I should say, right? The 2. 3 plus 2 is 5. Make a square. That's 25. Interesting. We'll come back to that. Then graph it. Makes a parabola. Okay? These circled ones over here are my predictions, meaning since I realize this is going to make a parabola once I see this bend down here, I don't need to really show the work once I see this pattern happening. In other words, on my line of symmetry here at negative two, I should have the same distance on either side of that center point. It's gonna be a dot for my graph. Same thing up here, okay? It's a reflection across a line of symmetry. That's a different subject, different day. So, does our big long equation right here equal this? Stay tuned. You know there's another video coming up. And that concludes how to write an equation from a tile pattern. Thanks for watching with your math. I hope you enjoyed this uh, screencast-o-matic presentation, which is free. You can download this and use it for free and probably make a show 10 times better than the one you just watched. But hey, thanks for watching anyway, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.